How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss another distant supermassive black hole that seems to create a bit of a mystery for astrophysicists. A mystery in regards to unusual pulsating signals that seem to have appeared around this black hole only a few years back. And though by itself signals coming from black holes is not unusual, in this case what makes it really bizarre is the way these signals are produced, the period between them, and the overall evolution over time. And so let's actually discuss this in a little bit more detail, starting with the system and the galaxy. And you basically see it right here. It has a somewhat unusual name, 1ES 1927 plus 654. And this is not really close, approximately 270 million light years away from us. So this is obviously not a very well known galaxy. But this galaxy located in the constellation Draco was discovered to have a black hole that suddenly awakened back in 2018 when this somewhat small 1.4 million solar masses black hole, and here I'm saying small because normally these black holes are much bigger, it's actually three times less massive than the black hole in the center of the Milky Way, suddenly and unexpectedly woke up, becoming really bright for at least a few months. So basically back in 2018, this was reported to be one of the first detections of a black hole suddenly becoming active and awakening, and we've never seen anything like this prior to this before. But after being relatively bright for some time, it then suddenly dimmed once again. Back then this was based on the measurements of its corona, or basically various x-rays, and here back in 2020, this was reported as a kind of a unusual destruction of the x-ray corona, involving some kind of a really drastic transformation that did not make much sense. And well, for some time this black hole basically remained completely dark once again. But then, over time, in just the last few years, it started to gradually brighten more and more, and eventually became 20 times as bright as back in 2018. And that is definitely not something we've seen before and was very challenging to explain. And so basically here, for some reason, first this black hole became bright, then it became dark once again, and then it became super bright. And by 2023, something really bizarre was detected here that the scientists wanted to understand. It basically started to produce extremely periodic emissions in the x-rays, with the brightness increasing more and more over time. And moreover, it was producing oscillations, though in this case the oscillations had been previously detected around other black holes. But this very bizarre, multi months long increase in brightness has never been seen anywhere. This was the first time ever a supermassive black hole, for some reason, increased in X-ray brightness in such an unusual steady way. And so basically here this was assumed to be maybe some kind of a very bizarre emission and the formation of an extremely powerful astrophysical jet that was seen in real time. But it was really only recent observations that discovered something entirely different. This black hole wasn't just constantly getting brighter, it was producing an extremely specific oscillation with a very specific period. And so in some of the recent observations and very detailed observations using lots and lots of X-ray data, Megan Masterson and her team discovered a quasi-periodic oscillations in the X-rays that were even more bizarre and even more unusual. Here, by measuring observations since 2022, they discovered that the brightness was fluctuating by approximately 10% with a super precise period that started at 18 minutes, but within two years, by 2024, decreased to just 7.1 minutes. In other words, something really strange was happening here because these fluctuations had a very specific period and a period that was just minutes in length. Now this was actually combined with a lot of other observations, with several other recent studies you can find in the description, including the one that studied this galaxy by using different wavelengths, and the one that mostly focused on radio jets and radio emissions, but they all seem to have discovered these unusual periodic oscillations that went from 18 minutes long to 7 minutes long in just 2 years. Which basically implied that this black hole, or something around this black hole, was oscillating with extreme precision, but was also increasing these oscillations over time. And these short period oscillations have never been observed around any supermassive black hole before, so whatever was happening here was an entirely new phenomenon. And so here there were obviously two questions. First, why did this black hole become so bright in the last three years? And second, what was causing these unusual oscillations and why did the period change in time decrease into seven minutes? And right now there are several explanations, with one potentially being the best. Now one of the explanations involves some kind of a hot gas that seems to block some of the radio emissions and was possibly responsible for producing some of these oscillations, but unfortunately may not explain all of the X-ray emissions and more importantly, why the period changed so much. Other explanations involve the accretion disk 
and some kind of a wobble inside of it, where for some reason, possibly as a result of some kind of a collision, the disc seemed to have formed some kind of a wave that started to vibrate over time, and it's this reverberation that basically causes these bizarre oscillations, and thus these changes in emissions. But here this explanation basically doesn't really tell us everything either. For example, what exactly collided here? And why exactly did the accretion disk change from 18 minute vibration to a 7 minute vibration? So basically here something is missing too. And then we have the third and possibly the best explanation, which might explain everything and present us with a really bizarre scenario. This could be an orbiting white dwarf. Because in this case, one possible way of producing these oscillations is by basically having some kind of an object orbiting around a black hole, with every orbit interfering with the accretion disk, causing the disk to vibrate and forcing the disk to form powerful plasma jets. Now, the observations with various telescopes actually did discover these jets, and so we know that these jets are definitely produced, with the estimate for their size being approximately half a light year, but it's really the models of white dwarfs orbiting black holes that actually explain what might have happened and why the period of oscillation changed so much. Because here, if these fluctuations were caused by some kind of an orbiting mass, we would actually expect the period to shorten over time, because in this case, any object is going to be moving closer and closer to the black hole as a result of gravitational wave interactions. So basically, anything orbiting a black hole is eventually expected to sink into it, as the gravitational waves slowly cause the object to move closer and closer. But the question is, why white dwarf? Why not, for example, a regular star or some kind of a planet? Well, here the answer is density. A typical star and a typical planet is going to be completely shredded apart, becoming nothing but a bunch of atoms, if it comes so close to a supermassive black hole. But a white dwarf is dense enough to survive tidal interactions, and is massive enough to disturb the accretion disk and to cause these powerful emissions. And so here, in this particular study, the explanation is that this is a dense orbiting object that decreased its orbit from 18 minutes to 7 minutes, suggesting that at its closest, it basically travels at something like half the speed of light, approximately 150,000 kilometers per second. But then there's also a small mystery. For some reason, in the last year or so, the actual orbital period stabilized. It's now been stuck at that 7.1 minute mark and has not actually changed its orbit much in the last few months. And turns out that, once again, a white dwarf in this case is still the best explanation. Because at this distance, this is where a density of a typical white dwarf can no longer prevent it from falling apart, and even the white dwarf at this distance is going to be slowly tidally disrupted, which would strip the matter from its surface, resulting in a mass loss that can actually offset the energy removed by gravitational waves. In other words, the tidal disruption of this white dwarf can now stabilize its orbit for just a little bit, preventing any more inward motion. And the thing is, based on this model, scientists behind this recent study believe there is now a way to test this hypothesis once and for all. All we have to do is wait. If this is indeed a white dwarf losing its mass and being slowly shredded apart, it's quite likely that it's going to be stuck here for some time. And it's also quite likely that eventually it might start moving away from the black hole, because in this case the additional mass loss might cause it to basically counteract the gravitational waves, making this object move slightly to the outskirts a little bit farther away from the black hole, which in theory should increase the period of oscillation from 7.1 minutes to something slightly higher. This should be detectable in the next few years, which would actually confirm this hypothesis and present us with a really unique case. The case for an object at the closest possible orbit to a black hole before it falls into the event horizon. Here this is only like 3 million kilometers away from the black hole, which is actually super close considering that this is a supermassive black hole that's actually relatively large in size. And because technically this would be the closest object we know orbiting around any black hole, this might present us with the perfect opportunity to study effects of black holes on regular matter and thus uncover mysteries of astrophysics that previously researchers just had no way to study. With the additional way of potentially detecting this one day and studying the oscillations being once again gravitational waves. Here, by having detectors like LISA, the large interferometer space antenna that's going to become operational in 2035, assuming that it works and assuming that it functions properly, we're going to have enough data to determine exactly what this is, because in this case the gravitational waves are expected to be visible and very likely will have a very similar period to what we actually observe from the X-rays. And so, in the next decade or so, we might have all of the required additional data to once and for all find out what's happening here, and if this is indeed 
the first ever object orbiting the black hole at such an extreme distance. Although naturally here there are still some unanswered questions. For example, what is a white dwarf even doing here and what's going to happen to it eventually? Likewise, a much more important question slash connection would be in regards to something that was discovered around our own central black hole, Sagittarius A star, just a few years back. You can learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but even our own black hole seemed to have something orbiting around it, although in this case it was not necessarily a physical object, or at least an object that was dense and compact. Here this seemed to be some kind of a cloud. But this cloud was orbiting really close as well, so maybe there is some connection, or maybe this is what happens to these white dwarfs eventually. So yeah, what is this white dwarf? What's going to happen to it? And is there any connection between these two discoveries? Now for the next few months we're probably not going to find out much, but once there are more observations and more discoveries coming from this very unusual system, the galaxy you see right here, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support us on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.